early on in medical school, I heard about the career of being a PA or a physician assistant, physician associate. And I was like, what in the world is that? Once I found out, part of me kind of wished that I actually did it. Let's talk about the differences in this video. Let's break it down. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lakshman, an internal medicine physician currently and about to be a cardiology fellow. But early on in medical school, I heard about the career of being a PA and the things that I heard about that we'll break down in today's episode really made the field attractive, even at some points, a little bit more attractive than being a physician. But today's episode, we're gonna break down everything from exactly what a PA is, the amount of training you have to do, the salaries, your job duties, and the future outlooks. But in case you're interested in a specific part of it, we'll talk about in today's episode, I'll go ahead and put up all the chapters and timestamps right here, as well as in the description. But let's get to it. Now, first, let's talk about exactly what a PA is. Now, a PA stands for a physician assistant, or as the name has been changed to be more appropriate for the role, physician associate. It's relatively a new career, with the first graduating class being in 1967. So it hasn't really been around very much, but they get to do a lot of cool stuff. And as we'll talk about throughout the episode, you'll find that both of them are very competitive, both have a very good salary, both require different amounts of training, but still you have to work hard to get to it. But ultimately, both also have the independence as well as some flexibility in terms of what you do to make decisions to ultimately take care of patients. So if we first start with the roles of what a PA can do, it's very similar to what a physician can do. Just like a doctor, a PA can see a patient one-on-one, -on -one. they can help create differential diagnosis, they can help determine which test and labs to order, um, they can also prescribe medications, see patients for follow-up in clinics, as well as assist in procedures, in some cases actually perform themselves. When I was in residency and working in the ICU, often the best people to do a procedure like a central line or anything in the ICU happen to be one of our PAs. So for example, if you have a PA who's working in the ICU, you may have an ICU physician who's overseeing their decision-making and may round with them during the day. If you have a PA who's working in the clinic, you may have a physician who's overseeing the notes and the decision-makings, and occasionally we'll see that patient on a follow-up visit just to make sure that everything is okay. Now that last point is really the biggest difference and the biggest asterisk of why somebody would choose to become a doctor versus a PA. Really, it just determines of how much independence do you want versus are you okay with somebody supervising and kind of titrating and adjusting your decision making based off of their preferences. For me, I knew that I wanted to ultimately be the decision maker and thus being an MD or a DO was a route that I ultimately pursued. But there's tons of people that I know, including in my own family, that are great PAs, love to take care of patients and are okay with having somebody kind of oversee their care. Some people even prefer it, but again, that's the biggest difference. Now we're gonna transition to the other biggest difference, which is the time of training. So let's get into the admissions. So first let's talk about the prerequisites to get into PA versus MD or DO school. Now if we begin with simply grades, we'll see that the average GPA for somebody who gets into medical school is anywhere between a 3.7, 3.8, even higher for more competitive programs. On the flip side, an average GPA for somebody who's getting into PA school is anywhere from a 3.6 to a 3.7. So both still very competitive academically to get into. Next we have to talk about the differences between the entrance exam. To become a doctor, you're required to take the MCAT, which is like a ridiculous seven and a half hour exam that both students in MD or DO school will take. And on the flip side, to apply to PA school, you're required to take the GRE or the graduate metric examination, which is much shorter, about three and a half to four hours long. There are a handful of PA schools that do require an examination very specific to becoming a PA, but most students will apply using the GRE. Other prerequisites are very similar between both fields. To become a doctor, most schools will require the very similar list of biochem, biology one, biology two, OCHEM, etc., to actually be able to apply to those institutions. Some schools have small adjustments and variations in their classes. Those same list of classes will be required to apply to PA schools. I did find that that there's a big variation from institution to institution when you're applying to PA school where certain class may be required for this school and not so much here. So you do have to do a little bit of forward and proactive thinking in terms of your class planning. But on the flip side to apply to medical school, most institutions have a typical pre-med major, which is not a major by the way, but it's the same list of classes that most students will take to apply to medical school, plus or minus one or two classes here and there. In addition to apply to both, it's recommended that you have some leadership experience some community service involvement, as well as maybe some previous work experience or interaction within the healthcare field to actually explain that this is why I want to be a PA versus a physician. Now, I would say that the biggest difference besides the entrance exam that you have to take to get into one of these two institutions happens to be the requirement of patient exposure hour. Now, to become a physician, it's usually recommended that when you're applying, you can show some evidence that, hey, I've done some stuff in clinical and medicine. I've shadowed a doctor here and there. I have reasons why I want to become a doctor. But there's no one asking, Lux, you have to do an X amount of hours to apply to medical school. In fact, I think I did about 100 hours of shadowing in one single semester of college, and then the rest of it, not so much. It was just a program that I did, I got my shadowing out of the way, I could talk about it a bunch on my application, but no one had a minimum or maximum requirement. On the flip side, you'll find that a lot of PA schools will actually have a minimum threshold of how much clinical hours you have to do. And what that means can vary from institution to institution, but you'll see that number go anywhere from 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 hours. That's why it's very common for somebody who's applying to PA school to take one or two years off, have a prior career working as anything from a scribe, a nurse, a CRNA, physical therapist, where maybe they're making a diversion from one career to another. But again, if I was to look at the application for somebody who applied to medical school versus 
somebody who's applying to PA school, that PA applicant almost guaranteed has tons of more clinical experiences on their application compared to their MD or DO colleagues. And then lastly, to close off this admission section, let's talk about acceptance rate. Now this is probably a big discrepancy and there's a lot of kind of variation in the data. For medical school, this number's kind of been around. It's usually about five and a half percent to somebody to get into an MD school, a little bit higher in terms of acceptance rate for a DO school, but obviously very competitive. One out of 20 applicants are actually getting into a medical school of their choice. But now if we look at the acceptance rate at PA school, you'll find that the variability is very large. You'll find some articles will actually report studies from 30 to 40% acceptance rate, which is enormously high for a competitive field. But on the flip side, if you look at specific programs, you'll see that acceptance rates are low as five to 10%. Now, the reason that there is such a big difference is one, data varies from institution to institution. There's not one good place of data compared to a medical school where there's tons of data for your acceptance rates, how many people applied, et cetera. But number two is that there is a big variation in terms of the quality of a PA school. You may have PA schools who are reporting all the people who applied versus who the people who got in compared to people who are actually eligible to actually get in, meaning they met the admission criteria or they submitted a secondary application if it was required. And then we look at the differences between who actually got in. That makes the numbers much different. So I would say if I had to put a number to it, it was probably closer to about 10 to 20% depending on the institution, but still very competitive to get into. And there are significantly less spots to get into a PA school compared to most medical schools. Now, next, let's actually transition in time and training. Now, this is the biggest perk where PA hands down wins in terms of their career, in terms of the length of training. To be a PA, you go to PA school for about 24 to 27 months, about two and a half years. On the flip side, to become a doctor, you go to four years of medical school, plus anywhere from three to eight years of residency, plus or minus extra years of fellowship. For example, I've done four years of medical school, done three years of residency, I took a year to work as a full-time physician, I'm going back for three more years of training and fellowship to be a cardiologist. So definitely a big difference between the two and a half to be a PA versus the four plus years to actually become an independent physician. But that's one of the most attractive and biggest advantages of going down the PA route. If you wanna make a six figure salary in healthcare, working with patients and being the primary decision maker for the most part, PA is a great route because again, it's two and a half years versus eight, 11 years for some careers in medicine to become a doctor. The other big difference that's nice to talk about now is the flexibility that you have in one role versus another. Now to become a doctor, the further you go, the more stuck you are in that field. For example, I'm a medicine doctor. I'm not going to somehow transition to now taking care of kids or pregnant females or doing surgery. That's not part of my role. I'm too far into the process. I would essentially have to go many years back, repeat the process of training and residency to get there. On the flip side, if you're a PA and you choose I wanna work in a dermatology clinic. Uh, actually, I'd like to do maybe some more basic procedures, or I wanna be in a family medicine clinic, or I wanna be a cardiology PA. There is some transition that's required, but you don't have to go through an extra residency or go back to PA school to do it. You're exposed to all of that during your two and a half months in schooling. And then ideally you've had some experience that transitions nicely to your new role. And I see this a ton with the PAs that I work with. You'll find that some have really cool histories. Maybe they worked in the emergency room, they got tired of it. And now they're a critical care PA. Or on the flip side, they're working in the critical care and it just got too busy. And now they're doing general internal medicine, et cetera. Everyone does a different role, but that flexibility is a very nice thing to have. Next, let's talk about job roles. And we've touched on this a little bit, but let's go ahead and elaborate. Again, being a physician, you pretty much have all the responsibilities, of what a doctor would do. PA, you pretty much can do most of those things under the supervision of an MD or a DO, but there are certain roles that it's very uncommon for a PA to do, or you won't see them at all perform. For example, if you have a PA who's in surgery, you won't actually see them doing the procedure. That'll be to the surgeon. You may have to see them actually taking care of the patient post-op, pre-op, but the surgeon will actually be involved in the procedure itself. In certain states, PAs have different roles in terms of what kind of medications they prescribe, certain substances like opioids. A certain state may say a physician actually actually sign off on the prescription ultimately. In certain states, they may be allowed to. But to paint a better picture in my current role as an internal medicine hospitalist at where I see PAs, it's very common for a PA to be the first person that you may see on a consulting service. So for example, if I call the cardiology team to see somebody with chest pain, the physician may be aware of the patient, but they may send their one or two PAs that works under them in that service to go see the patient, do the note, basically come up with a management plan, discuss it with the doc, the doc will come back, the cardiologist will see the patient and agree to most of the management. Most of those PAs have been doing cardiology for quite some time, sometimes even more than the actual physician. And so they're able to guide the decisions with maybe some adjustments. Now that's the inpatient side, but on the flip side, if you go to a clinic, for example, if you go to that same cardiology clinic, you may actually see that PA who sees how you're doing and the physician may oversee the note or see you every other time while the PA sees you in the middle. So finally, let's talk about numbers. How much money do you make in each of these fields? Now as a physician, both an MD or a DO, again, it varies greatly in terms of the fields you do, but the average salary ends up being about $300,000, $339,000 as of 2000. 
20 from Netscape. And again, this is a broad range. You can be in the field of pediatrics to primary care, where you tend to make something a little bit lower in the 240, 200,000 range, or as high as something that's very hands-on, very surgical, procedural, and you'll make anywhere from kind of half a million, $570,000. If we break down the average salary of being a PA, if we look at the results from the American Academy of Physician Assistants, we'll see that the average that is reported is about 115,000. Now I see a big variation in this number too. I see some PAs who'll make right around that mark and some who are, for example, working in the ED or surgical route where you're just getting tons of patients that you're seeing because of the nature of the role that you do. They're making close to like right underneath 200 to above $200,000. Now for both fields, it goes without saying that where you work, the job demand, the flexibility, your role in terms of how many patients you see, as well as some of your experience and the bonuses and the compensation structure of the group that you're joining is really going to greatly determine your salary. So ultimately, which is better? Now this completely depends on your personal preference. Like I mentioned, if I had known about being a PA early on when I was a pre-med student, there's a good chance that I'd be making this channel as a PA channel because shorter training, make a good salary, you can support your family no problem in the United States on a six-figure income in most places of the state, and you get to take care of patients, make decisions, and yeah, you have somebody who kind of steers your direction making depending on their preferences, but for me, that may not have been the biggest issue back then if I was making that decision, but two and a half years of training and then immediately start making six figures when I'm kind of in my early 20s versus now when I'm about to be 30 and finally have my first six-figure income, I could say PA is very attractive. But if you are somebody who just likes to be in charge, likes to be that ultimate decision maker, and as I've done this more and more in medical school, that definitely happens to be me, then being a physician is a great route to go. Both have their perks, both have their cons, both make good salaries, both ultimately get to take care of patients, and there are physicians who are happy, there are physicians who are sad, there are PAs who are happy, PAs who are sad. So go on your personal preference. If there's very specific questions you have about one field versus the other, go ahead and add them in the comment section down below. But ultimately, if you wanna go on one of these journeys to be a doc, or be a PA and you want to do well, then go ahead and check out down below a free download to our Med School Success Handbook. This is a document that I'm updating, my team and I are updating on a weekly basis with all those tips on how to study better, how to be happy, how to find that balance, how to be that productive student that you ultimately need to be to be successful and fulfilled in your career. Again, all the tips that I wish somebody gave to me on day one, I'm just giving to you guys for free. That'll be linked down below. Now, if you enjoyed this and you want to see what my life looks like as a full-time hospitalist, this right here, and if you want to see the difference between being an internal medicine doctor and a family on Medicine Doctor, check out this episode and I'll put it in the description as well. But as always, my friends, thanks so much for joining me on my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours. Best of luck. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.